Hello, and welcome to our show, Story, brought to you by Trip Tray Productions. I'm your host, Bob Scott. Thank you for being here today. Joining us in the studio, we have Lucia Taylor, a young writer and filmmaker, and Bob Squarick, a not quite as young writer and filmmaker. Bob, Lucia, thank you for being here. Thanks thank you for, for having, having us. me. Yeah, I sure. it. Now, Lucia, let's start with you. You are, like I said, a writer, you're a comedian, you're a filmmaker, mm -hmm. and you are currently going to CCAC South, Community College of Allegheny County, for their film program. Yeah. But a lot of what you do is self-taught, from what I understand. Is that correct? It is, yeah. I mean, I've been doing this for years. I mean, I kind of started when I was like five. Um, Five years old, yeah. you were a so prodigy. <laughs> really, my older brother and sister kind of got me into it because they started filming with like a little little camcorder or, or something like that. And then um, they would put me into their videos and I'd feel really like special and important. I'd have this little <laughs> role I would have. Uh, and then I uh, kind of went from there because um, they got older and they went and did their own things. And I was like, well, I still really love doing this. So then I, I started um, my YouTube channel um, with my sister. And I've been doing that ever since. So yeah, it's been years of just teaching myself everything from like editing and lighting and camera work, just anything really. So. And you have a YouTube channel, which I is do. called? Taylor Treasures. Taylor Treasures. Called. Yep. Mm -hmm. And that's something you and your sister do or were doing together, correct? Yeah, um, we started that in 2017. And then we kind of did that together for many years. And then recently, kind of in the past six months, year, she's taken kind of a break from that, kind of a step back, uh, just because she runs her own business, so she's super busy with that. Mm -hmm. But uh, hopefully I'll bring her in for a video here and there, mm -hmm. you know, whenever she has time. And what type of content is, is on your YouTube channel? What, what sort of videos do you do? So it's uh, a lot of comedy, like a lot of comedy sketches, uh, but really... A lot of the videos, which started back in 2017, it's kind of like a, it's always hard to explain, but it's like a talk show slash variety show because we would just sit down at a table with like a mic and anything I could think of for that week we would do. So we would, we would share fun facts, do science experiments. We do, uh, I have a million wigs because I would do all sorts of characters <laughs> and, uh, and that. And my uh, popular character is called Bogo Phil. He's just a... He's an older man, and he's very energetic and just goofy. Bogo Phil? Bogo Phil, <laughs> yes. Buy one, get one free. You heard that right. Yes, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so there's a, on that talk show, we did that for so long. There's just, we had guests on. We did, you know, we had people on that would do, like, I make sand sculptures. So they would share their story on that. So really, we would do, like, quizzes. I mean, I could go on. There's just so much we would do with that. And then recently we made a kind of a, a comedy drama. It was called Behind the Characters. It was a mini series. So that was kind of just a more scripted thing. And it was about like two young filmmakers who, who were trying to like build their own uh, company. And then, yeah, I just have comedy sketches here and there. And then recently I have um, the news be like that sometimes, uh, which is just news satire kind of. So. so it's called the news be like that sometimes. News be like that sometimes, yes. Which it does. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and that is currently running on PC TV. It is, is that correct. Yes, you yes. can find it on there or my YouTube channel. Or wherever. YouTube, which is all under Taylor Treasures. Is that or yes. is there a separate one? Uh, that's it's all under Taylor Treasures. Right. Taylor, T A Y L O R, Treasures. Yes. So check it out. Yes. And when did you start taking classes then at? Pitch, or at um, CCAC? So I started, uh, la not this fall, but the fall before that, I started classes. And uh, I'm just doing it part-time um, because I work full-time, so it's whenever I can fit it in, really. So uh, right now I'm doing uh, a couple classes. One of them is a cinematography class, which I've, I've really learned a lot. Like, I thought going in, I was like, oh, I've, I'm self-taught, I know a lot. And I, I do know uh, some. But then I went in and I'm like, wow, there's so much to learn. Like, there's so much that I didn't know before I went into this class. And it's, it's been really interesting, so. And that's where you met Bob. Exactly, right? yes. Who is also a student at 
CCAC South and has been for a few years now, right, Bob? Before COVID, I started. Um, I, I'm a non-traditional film student in that uh, I've already got my undergraduate and graduate degrees, and <clears throat> so and I have a lot of stories to tell. People uh, asked me to write write a book, and I said, I'd, well, I'd rather make movies about it, and so uh, uh, I have a, my own production company, and I'm the producer, Trip Trade Productions, and, you, and that's I'm a, on the, my YouTube channel. But I, I met Lucia in the editing class, I believe, more mm -hmm. than in cinematography. Yeah. And uh, I was um, really impressed with her work ethic and uh, the quality of her work, and so uh, for my film two, uh, which is uh, called Hello My Friend, it's an adaptation of a book by an Irish writer, Linda Bernal Reardon, and um, there was a, a, a special effects scene that Lucia did for me, and uh, along with color correction, and she saved my movie. I mean, I'm right. He, he gives me too much credit. No. I, I helped a little, but I don't know if I saved it. But I, no, believe me, you saved it. And, and Bob and I have known each other for what, maybe 25 years now? Yes. Uh, and he's affectionately known in, in the local theater community or film community as Judge Bob because he was a judge, a yes. state judge for many years. Right, a state administrative law judge. Yeah. Um, and is a uh, Marine Corps veteran. Correct. Uh, Vietnam, Beirut, and Desert Storm. That's how I keep track of time is by <laughs> wars I was in. And so that's why people wanted me to write a book. And most of my films uh, are veteran-oriented. A lot of them are. Um, that's because you write what you know, and that's what I know. So. Right. So um, you are an inspiration to some of us old geezers. I, tell you. So I have taken a couple classes there and uh, something I want to do more of. But Bob also takes theater classes, too. So. Well, we did the, hello, my friend. You wrote it. You, you did the, the stage adaptation. We wrote an adaptation of the book, Hello, My Friend, for stage. And then Bob adapted it further for, for his for film project. Right. So. And uh, Lucia saved the day with her editing. So. <laughs> Full circle here. Yeah. Yeah. What's your What's your editing address? Editing. Oh, uh, you mean email? Yeah. Your email. Uh, how do people get in touch with you? Yeah. It's uh, Lucia Taylor Editing at Gmail dot com. So pretty Lucia straightforward. Lucia Taylor Editing at Gmail dot com. Yes. And I can give a testimony to this young lady because she's editing a project I'm involved in, a short comedic film, uh, written and produced by Cindy Dallas and. Lucia has been working on that and putting up with all of our demands, <laughs> but <laughs> she does a great job. She really does. No, but that, it was really well done. I really liked it yeah, when I was it, editing it. It was pretty funny. <laughs> it, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. So. Um, now, you mentioned um, your sister's business and work you're doing, which is with pets. Mm -hmm. Now, that's another love of yours, right? Animals? Yes, definitely. I love them. Um, I do, so my job title is pretty much Senior Pet Care Specialist, and I work for my sister's business, as he said. It's called Captain Flossy Dogs Pet Service. Captain? So, Captain Flossy Dogs. Flossy Dogs Pet yeah, Service. Yeah, the name. I love that. Yeah, people always ask what it's from, and uh, the word Flossy, she took the first letter of all of our pets growing up and kind of put them together and tried to make a word, and she got Flossy out of it. So that's Cop Captain Flossie, and uh, I work for her full time. And pretty much, we will go into anyone's home, and we will, you know, take care of their dog, cat, hamster, what have you, anything really that you have. And yeah, you know, we do mostly dog walks for people because they'll be at work or something, so we have to do that. Or we'll do overnights where if they're gone, we'll go there and stay with the animal, or just do a midday visit. Pretty much whatever anyone wants, and. People seem to really appreciate that, mm. you know, they get to have someone take care of their animal that's, they get to stay in their home because a lot of animals, when they go to kennels and stuff, they can get kind of stressed. And yeah. So it's a nice alternative for them. And you had a lot of pets growing up. Yeah, right? yeah, I've always had pets. Uh, always had cats 
and uh, I had my first dog, which is a Beagle mix, when I was, got it when I was five, I think, and uh, we had him for a while, and then I also have a, a Lab, uh, Pit Bull, and Beagle mix, which is my dog right now. That's an interesting mix. It is, and <laughs> you wouldn't think that he's Beagle, because for a while we were told that he was part German Shepherd and Lab, which there's no German Shepherd, not sure where the person got that, but uh, he's, he's, mo he's Brindle, and he's about 55 pounds, and he's got like floppy ears, so really he looks like Lab Pit Bull. Beagle's more personality, I would say. He's definitely Beagle-ish in that perspective or aspect. Uh, so yeah, we have him and then a couple cats and some chickens, so. It's a chickens? Quite, yes, it's quite the zoo. <laughs> yeah. You, you had chickens as pets? Yeah, I mean, obviously they live outdoors. They're not walking around <laughs> in diapers inside our house. Uh, but we started getting them when I was probably between seven and nine. And they're a lot of fun. The f initial setup is a lot of work. You know, you gotta make the coop and, and everything. But once you have it all set up, they're, they're not too difficult. You know, feed them, water them, clean up their area. And they're, they're really fun. They actually have a lot of personality, which sometimes you wouldn't think that with birds, but they all like have their own little personality. They're very cute. <laughs> now, have you used any of the animals in your videos? Do they make appearances? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I have a video, a really, really old Taylor Treasures video. I don't recommend watching it. It's a lot of cringe. I wouldn't. But uh, there's one part where I take this cat that I have, and I, I say Laura turned into a cat. Um, and I know there are probably other videos where I've had animals, animals in them, but I can't really think of them right now. But yeah. Well, there's the one clip where uh, from News Be Like That with the Chinese zoo. Mm -hmm. where the, they think that the, uh, it's a, uh, their bear is actually a person standing on its legs, <laughs> and then your sister comes in as the bear. Yeah, yeah that's, a, that's a funny clip right there. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we could watch that. Yeah, we could. We could show some clips. I'm saying it's possible that these are humans. I rest my case. Now, an exclusive interview with Angela the bear to tell her side of the story. General Sose. You know, to me, this whole situation is just so offensive. I mean, I've been a bear my whole life and I stand on my two hind legs one time and nobody believes that I am. Look, my front legs have been giving me some issues lately, while with Lee and misaligned and getting into a wrestling match with that floozy Franzi. I think she owns the shade of the watermelons. The point is, standing like that gave me some relief, and now I can't seem to do anything without being judged. I am a bear, whether you believe it or not, and I just want my privacy back again. Let me live in peace. I am this close to losing it. Please, leave me alone. Leave me in peace. Drink my drink and anyone have any ibuprofen now currently with with your work at ccac you're going to be doing a student film there yeah it's actually already done uh we filmed that just me and one other student and that'll be out i'm not sure when this is going out but that'll be out on my youtube channel on december 5th okay. uh, it's it's mostly silent film it has music in it but it's more about the imagery and using color and different shots to convey a story. Oh, cool. Yeah. Cool. So this is for cinematography, not for film one. Yeah, cinematography. Yeah. Okay. You're going to you will be taking film one mm -hmm. and a longer How long is your is uh, your cinematography film? It's uh, five and a half minutes. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, you of course, your background is in comedy. You do it writing, you know, doing comedy shows, comedy sketches, uh, satiric news show. But right. have you done or do you want to do anything more dramatic? Yeah, that's a good question. I have done, I've dabbled in a little bit of drama with that Behind the Characters series. That's mostly comedy, but I do do some uh, dramatic acting in that. And I do enjoy it. Uh, I think I just always gravitate towards comedy 
because I love to watch comedy. Like that's my favorite genre to go and watch. I love to laugh, and so uh, I love being goofy and making people laugh. So I think it's what I feel most comfortable in. But I definitely, you know, want to experiment more in in the drama side of things. I think that'd be a lot of fun. No. Yeah. And do you act also? Not in a professional capacity. No, just just with my YouTube channel, pretty much. No. Yeah. Which I think that would be fun too. I I kind of have to get out of my comfort zone for for that to act. I've done a lot of acting, but usually it's by myself or with some friends and family. So to do it in front of a live crew or you know audience, that I have to build up some courage to do that for sure. Well, we do need to challenge ourselves and stretch ourselves. We do you know, as as artists, whether we're writers, filmmakers, actors, right. all of the above. Yeah, that is something I think I want to expand upon, you know, definitely, especially getting into my classes and everything. Um, I think it would be a, a lot of fun to start doing some more professional acting for sure. Stand-up comedy? <laughs> oh, I don't, I don't know about that. I don't know if I'm funny enough for that. <laughs> Sit-down comedy? Well, yeah, I mean, I do that, so. <laughs> and what do you have coming, coming up next here, Robert? Uh, it, well, uh, right now I'm taking uh, Film 150, which is uh, scenic design um, for, for film. Uh, we're painting, learning, you know, painting backgrounds and things like that. So in the, in the spring, I'm either going to be taking uh, one or two film classes, either a writing class and or um, there's a class on uh, special effects makeup, you know, like if you want to be a zombie and you have all this, how to do all that. Uh, and there's, there is a technical term for that. Um, when they have, when um, uh, uh, public services, I don't know, is that the term? They do these disaster drills. And right, they, so right, they, right, they right. make the, the people up to look like they have broken legs and all this. And there's, but there is a special term for that. And I don't, I can't remember what it is. But it's uh, it's that kind of uh, makeup and prosthetics and things like that in the spring. Um, uh, so that, that's a class I'm interested in taking, as well. But so the film that that Lucia helped with the edit and, and saved it, as you said, which you did last year for. Uh, your film class. Yeah, film two. Film that was two. A, that's a senior production class there. Maybe um, you could tell us a little bit about about that and the, the special effects that were involved. Okay, this, uh, I don't know if we could show the clip for it or not, but basically... Um, I think we could. We could probably... Or at least part of it. Show some of that, right? Yeah. So that was quite fascinating. Yeah, so as the, the man, the actor, Michael Barrett. Um, Barnett. Barnett, I'm sorry. Michael Barnett, Barnett yeah, very, very talented young very actor. Very talented yeah. Pittsburgh actor. Um, he uh, dies, falls on the ground, on the floor of, the, of his bedroom. Then we see in the morning him getting up, sitting on the bed, and he looks down and he sees his body, he's a ghost. And so how, that wasn't a body double, that was uh, taking two, two shots separate, locking down, block, uh, blocking everything. And uh, Kevin Hania, our director for this episode, he was the genius behind that. And uh, Lucia was the genius of putting those two shots together to make it look like a seamless one shot. So uh, it's both of them. Uh, they're they're the magic makers for that shot. Yeah, it's called a, a split screen 
you pretty much just take the two shots uh, while you're editing and, and put them on top of each other and then you just it's very simple you just take a little effect put it on them and then you can just move them however you need them to be so which I couldn't do but she does um, it's all magic right yes what, which programs do you edit on we're gonna get technical uh, DaVinci Resolve no I mainly do um, Adobe Premiere Pro okay that's what I use I did use for a while, uh, it's called Wondershare Filmora, which I think a lot of people haven't heard of. It's more of, I don't know if it's made internationally or something, but it's a smaller thing. And I like it because you pay for it once and that's it. With Adobe, you have a subscription every month you have to pay, but it was just a one-time thing. But I kind of moved on to Adobe just because that's the more professional one. There, was, there are more options on that program than, than Filmora. So. And this is all pretty much self-taught for you? Yeah, yeah, pretty much, especially the editing, um, just because a lot, of, a lot of the videos that we would do at that sit-down sit talk show, that took a lot of editing, a lot of clips, a lot of even some special effects, and so it's just been hours of just sitting there and just fiddling and learning new things. A lot of times I would just have a question, and so I'd put it in YouTube, and there it was, there was the answer. So. Yeah, <laughs> YouTube is so helpful for many things. And nowadays, with with uh, the technology with iPhones or some of the other smartphones and editing packages, I hate to say anybody can be a filmmaker, but anybody can make content. That's for sure, and we see that on YouTube and TikTok. Maybe it's not always the best, but uh, young kids are out there doing it. And you got to give them props, you know? Yeah, yeah, it's definitely a lot easier than it used to be, especially just learning it, as I said, with YouTube. I mean, all the answers are pretty much there for wh whatever you need. I mean, even Adobe, if you would buy that, there's like, you know, two hour, three hour long videos just devoted to showing you everything that that, that program has. And so, yeah, it's, there's really a lot of interesting and in, like informative content out there to learn anything you need when you're making content. Now, as a young person who was self-taught and, and learned this through trial and error, and then now is taking classes, what would you recommend to, to young people who want to get into that, who want to make YouTube or TikTok videos or, you know, films? Mm -hmm. um, does it really help to then take classes and learn it a little more professionally? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, it really depends what you're trying to do. If you're, you know, if you are able to be successful on YouTube and maybe you've already been making videos and they're a little more informal or less professional, I, I don't know if you would necessarily need the classes for that, just because that's a lot simpler and you can kind of learn that on your own. But if you do want to delve into something more professional, maybe a short film, or you really want to do things in, the, I guess, the correct professional way, or you maybe you want to move into the actual film industry, I definitely think it would be very helpful to take a few classes. Because again, you know, going in, I thought I, I knew a lot just because of the self-taught, you know, aspect. And again, I did, but, you know, there were things like, you know, special words for the cameras or different things here or you know the way the lighting should be with the three-point lighting uh, and then the camera you know with my camera it's a lot simpler and then when I got to the class I was like wow I, I have no idea how to use this camera so I think if you do want to get into it more professionally it is very helpful to take classes and just to learn you know everything that you do on on a set really now, um, what kind of camera do you shoot with? It is, it's a Canon. It's very small, um, and it's called a Canon, it's a Mark I. EOS, EOS? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's correct. I can't remember the exact title, but yeah, it's, it's a little small thing. But it's, I mean, for what I need, it works really well. You keep it on a tripod and there's no, you don't have an extra person or well, it depends what I'm making. For the news be like that sometimes, I can do that all by myself. Yeah, I'd put it on a tripod in front of the, front of the green screen, put the lights up, and that's about it. But for anything else, like maybe a comedy sketch that's in different areas, not in front of a green screen, then 
I usually uh, have a few people help me with that. You mentioned photography. You've got some experience with photography also? Uh, not, I wouldn't say a lot. I've, I've dabbled in it, but definitely I've focused more on just filming the, the content. Film, yeah. yeah. You did. You did do the uh, the baby robin that fell on your porch. Oh, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Back <laughs> was, to the animals. Yeah, there's a little baby robin. It was on my porch, and I had a, a longer lens that you'd given me, and so I got a real close-up shot. It was pretty cool. So, what's your your dream project if you could do anything? Oh boy. Uh, Put you on the spot there. <laughs> no, I think I would really love to do like a classic comedy variety show, kind of like the Carol Burnett show. Uh -huh. um, I, I really love that. And any kind of, like, I would love to do something that's more kind of like the older sitcoms and variety shows. Uh, I, I love I love Lucy, the Dick Van Dyke show, Andy Griffith show, any of that stuff. And so, yeah, any kind of scripted sitcom or, or like specifically kind of variety show with all those sketches, I think it would be a lot of fun to do. Very cool, yeah. very cool. Hopefully you get to do that. I hope so, one day, huh. yeah. So now where can people find you and your work, um, YouTube? Yeah, so you can find me on my YouTube channel, which again is Taylor Treasures. You can also find me on Instagram, which is Taylor at Taylor Treasures Official. I'm also on Facebook, which is just under Taylor Treasures. And I also have a TikTok under Taylor Treasures. Haven't posted anything in a while, but if you scroll back, I have a lot of fun videos that I'll like reenact scenes from my favorite movies. It's a lot of fun. And also uh, my Gmail, if you ever need an editing project you need edited or a film project edited, it's Lucia Taylor editing at gmail.com. Well, thank you, Lucia, and thank you, Bob, yeah. Judge Bob, okay. for being here today and, and sharing your experiences with us. Of course. And um, thank you, our audience, for joining us. And please tune in again when we come back with another episode of Story.